Hey, so I want to show you some um, different kinds of quadrilaterals. And I'll show you a, this taxonomy of quadrilaterals that I created here, which is a sort of classification system. And before I do that, I want to do a brief taxonomy um, that has nothing to do with math. So you can kind of visualize what we're trying to do here. So um, I could have a um, classification that goes like, um, I could have mammals as a supergroup here. So um, all mammals have hair, maybe I won't write these down, hair, um, mammary glands, um, they're warm-blooded. Okay, so there's certain character, uh, that's impossible to read, I'm sorry. Um, so there's certain characteristics that everything that's a mammal will share. And so in our taxonomy here, if I draw an arrow down like that and say mammals um, who swim, I have my subgroup here of um, mammals who swim. Um, all these animals will have all the characteristics of mammals but they'll also have the special characteristic that they swim. And then I could do another subgroup of the mammals who swim and are large. Um, okay, like like whales. Whales are mammals who swim and are large. Okay, not all mammals who swim are large. You know, uh, dolphins are not that big, but uh, whales are very big. So this whales are a subgroup of mammals who can swim. And mammals who can swim are a subgroup of just mammals. So everything below mammals will have all the characteristics of mammals. So whales are have hair and mammary glands and are what does that say? Uh, Warm-blooded. Um, but they also have the characteristic that they can swim, and they have a special characteristic that they're large. So that's that's a taxonomy in general. And now let's let's go to math world with that and uh, explore quadrilaterals. I'm going to pause this, get rid of this, and we'll, we'll deal with math. Alright, so now dealing with quadrilaterals, I've got this taxonomy here. Um, and at the top is just the, the, the supergroup quadrilateral. So everything with four sides and four vertices, four straight sides. So one, two, three, four, and four vertices. One, two, three, four. Okay, so everything below it will have those characteristics. Everything below will be a quadrilateral. Then I've got kind of three sort of families of quadrilaterals here. Um, the first group are parallelograms. And parallelograms have opposite sides that are congruent. So um, this side and this side have the same length. And this side and this side have the same length. And opposite sides are parallel. So this is a special kind of quadrilateral where the opposite sides are congruent and opposite sides are parallel. Okay, so everything below this parallelogram will share these characteristics. The opposite sides are congruent and opposite sides are parallel, uh, but they'll also have some special characteristics themselves here. So following the parallelogram family here, and I marked it all in red to keep, make it easier to, to keep track of. So a special kind of parallelogram is a, a rhombus where all the sides are congruent. So basically like a square except kind of flop to the side. Um, Opposite sides are parallel still, and all the sides are congruent. They're all the same length. All right, a special type of rhombus, which is a special type of parallelogram, is a square. All the sides are congruent, um, but now uh, all the angles are 90 degrees. So a special type of rhombus. Okay, let's back up. Back up to um, parallelogram. Um, a special kind of parallelogram is a rectangle where the opposite sides are congruent and the opposite sides are parallel um, but all the angles are 90 degree angles and then uh, a square is a subset of rectangles um, where not only are all the angles 90 degrees and opposite sides are congruent and opposite sides are parallel but actually all the sides are congruent okay so that's the parallelogram um, side of the family of quadrilaterals um, then we've got kites and kites have two pairs of uh, congruent adjacent sides. So um, this side and this side 
are congruent, they're the same length, and they're adjacent. They they're attached to each other. So here's one of the pairs of congruent adjacent sides, and here's the other pair of congru congruent adjacent sides. Um, it's called a kite for for obvious reasons. It's that's kites have the shape of a kite, and vice versa. Um, all right, now let's look at the tra trapezoid um, line in the quadrilaterals. Uh, a trapezoid has one pair of parallel sides. Um, so one, um, two. There's two sides that are parallel to each other. So that's that's all it takes to be a trapezoid. Two pairs of parallel sides. Um, and then a subclass, a subgroup of the trapezoids are the isosceles trapezoids, um, where the um, non-parallel sides are congruent. So this side is parallel to this side. And the two sides that aren't parallel to each other, this side and this side, are congruent. They're the same length. So here's the general idea of, of different types of quadrilaterals you'll come across. Um, you've got your parallelograms, your kites, and your trapezoids. And um, they, they all have different characteristics that make them special, but they're all quadrilaterals. They all have four sides that are straight and four vertices.